Public charging just got that little bit easier in the UK. After a long wait in December 2025, easier access to public charging is finally here. Did you notice? Or have you no idea what I mean? Stick with me as I explain it all for you today. Hello everyone, I'm Andrew. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk you through why public charging just got easier in the UK. Strap in and let me explain. The UK government passed a regulation in 2023 intended to make public charging a little simpler and a little fairer. This was the Public Charge Point Regulations 2023. I've put a link to the full text of the regulation in the video description so you can look at the details for yourself if you'd like. I've also done a video on this subject in the past and I'll link to that too, both from the description and from the end screen. Have a watch of that for all of the juicy details if you want those. However, it's relevant to review this legislation today because one of the rules had a long lead time, a period of two years, to allow the charge point operators plenty of time to implement it. This was important as it needed software to be changed or created to achieve it, as well as the setup of appropriate commercial contracts, and it was only reasonable to allow plenty of time for all of that to happen. The legislation included regulations on seven different things which I'll summarise for you now before taking in more detail on the one that has only just come into force. The rules require charge point operators to be clear and transparent with their pricing, allow contactless payment at all of their DC rapid chargers as well as any high power AC charge points installed after November 2024. Measure the reliability of their DC rapid chargers, ensuring that they achieve at least 99% uptime across the calendar year. Provide a free helpline, available at all times their chargers are operational. Report on their network reliability to the Secretary of State on an annual basis. Implement an API using the Open Charge Point interface to provide access to data about their charge points. And finally, support the use of at least one roaming payment provider at all of their charge points. This last one was the most complex, and therefore the one for which there was a two-year grace period. But the good news is that the grace period ended on the 24th of November 2025, and from now on, we should be able to use roaming payment providers for every public charge point, if that's what we prefer. In the past, a number of charge point operators have wanted to grab our personal data by having their own app to which you were required to sign up to use their charge points. This is valuable to them for a number of reasons. Firstly, it allows them to monitor us and learn about us, often to help with marketing to us, milking us for all we're worth. But they're also trying to win us as part of their market share to gain our loyalty Perhaps we won't sign up to a competitor's network if we've already signed up to theirs. After all, all these app registrations are annoying. And that's really the problem. They are time consuming and annoying. Turning up to a charge point and having to download and register a new app is a terrible user experience. And that's why the government intervened. If the transition to electric vehicles is to be successful, then it needs to be easy. It needs to be convenient rather than inconvenient, and that simply wasn't happening. Opening up DC rapid chargers to contactless payments went some way to make it easier, but only if you didn't need a receipt. If you weren't a business user, for example, who had to recover your charging costs through expenses or include them as part of a tax return. Furthermore, contactless payment results in quite a cost for the charge point operator. They have to fit a fairly expensive terminal to their charge points, provide it secure access to a banking backend, and cope with how unreliable they are. For that reason, contactless was never going to work for the AC network, which we expect to be much more plentiful in the long term. It is AC charge points that will be everywhere to enable charging for those who can't do it at home or where people are dwelling for a long time, such as at work or at leisure facilities. 
AC charge points are much cheaper than DC rapid chargers, and if they are to be prolific, then they must not be held back by expensive and unreliable technology. They can't be expected to use contactless payment. That's the reason roaming is important. Using roaming payment providers limits the number of times people need to sign up to an app to share their personal and payment information and yet still be able to use a plethora of charge points. The hope is that there will be many charge point operators but just a few roaming payment providers, making the whole thing a lot easier. That's what will make public charging a success. We've had to be patient, to wait for this final bit of legislation to kick in and for everything to open up, allowing for easier access. But as of the 24th of November 2025, it finally is. The closed proprietary AC networks of old are gone and we can get to use them at last. Unfortunately, there are a couple of potential problems with the legislation. It wasn't perfect. I've spoken about one concern in the past, which is to do with how reliability is measured, but it turns out there might be another. I've spent a few days compiling a list of charge point operators, a list I'll share with you in a moment, but it has not been easy. The problem is there seems to be no requirement for a charge point operator to share what roaming providers they support. As a result, those charge point operators who were resistant to this change, who still want to grab your data and keep you locked in, don't publicise how to use a roaming payment provider on their network. It can take quite a lot of digging to uncover what roaming providers are useful, which give us access to what network. And at the moment, even the providers themselves are not being very good at making that obvious. I want this information to be much more easily available to help us all out, but more on that in a minute. First, let's look at what I've found so far. First of all, here is a list of the 15 largest UK networks by number of charge points and some of the payment providers that can be used to access them. This is a mix of networks, usually offering both DC and AC charge points, but not always. As might be obvious from the list, I use two roaming providers, ZapPay through the ZapMap app and Octopus Electroverse, and so they have been the easiest to add to the list, but even then not easy. Plug surfing also features in some places. I suspect they support more of the networks but their app begs for registration constantly and was therefore very annoying to use, so I simply couldn't get more than this from it. There's also one called Digital Charging Solutions, a name that probably won't mean anything to you. However, they enable payment via the apps of a number of manufacturers, including BMW and Mini, Hyundai and Kia, Mercedes, Subaru and Toyota, and Volvo to name but some. However, they also have a direct-to-consumer brand, one that I'd never heard of until doing this research, and that's Charge Now. That's another one we can use if we want. I'd like to give a shout out to GridServe for this information, as their website lists all of the roaming providers that can be used to access their network, including explaining what DCS offer. Similarly, I'd like to shout out Osprey, who similarly have a great page on their website, helping their customers find easy ways to pay for their charge points. Good on you, Osprey. Speaking of GridServe, here's a second list of some of the other bigger networks, either ones that I've come across myself, or those having received awards for their networks from ZapMap. Therefore, I'd also like to give a quick shout out to ZapMap, whose website continues to be a wealth of useful information for EV drivers, as well as for the industry as a whole, with their awards process helping to highlight the best of charge point operators, however big. As mentioned, I use two roaming payment providers. ZapMap's app is really useful, and if you haven't got it, then I highly recommend downloading it. I think you have to register to use the app, but it's well worth it in my opinion. However, they are one of the few mapping apps who also make their information available via their website, so you can use that if you don't want to register, 
and choose not to use them to pay for charging. ZapMap have a premium subscription that gets you small discounts for charging on a few networks, but their free tier is all that I have. And I would suggest you consider that first, then upgrade if it's sufficiently useful to you. The other one I use is Octopus Electroverse. Again, Electroverse is free and its app is pretty good as well. What's more, if you are also an Octopus Energy customer on their Intelligent Go tariff, then you get discounts of 8% on quite a lot of the networks they are integrated with. I've put a referral link to Octopus Electroverse in the video description if you'd like to give it a try. If you use that link, then we each get £5 credit the first time you charge using Electroverse. You don't need to be an Octopus Energy customer to use Electroverse. You can have one without the other. However, if you also switch to Octopus Energy and use their Intelligent Go tariff, then you get some charging discounts through Electroverse. There's also a referral link for Octopus Energy in the description. Use that and we both get £50 credit on our energy bills, which would be a nice Christmas bonus, wouldn't it? By the way, it's the inclusion of referral links that result in the video being listed as having a paid promotion. YouTube requires that we set that flag if we include that sort of link in a video, although not everyone seems to abide by that rule. All right, I've done a shout out to a few good companies in the video. Now I'd like to name and shame a few I wish would do better. Firstly, you'll notice that there's a question mark next to DCS on BP Pulse's entry. I tried to find out how to pay for BP Pulse charge points via their website, but failed. So I emailed them. After a week, I got a response telling me that the information is on their website, including a link to a page that only tells you about their own payment methods. I think BP Pulse are continuing to resist the roaming requirement, and I'm only guessing that they use DCS. I have responded to their email asking for more help with the question I asked, but I've also reached out to the team at Electrifying in the hope that they can shed some light on the matter through their industry contacts. Therefore, you might hear this subject being discussed on the next Electrifying podcast, so watch out for that if it happens. I love their podcast and will watch with pleasure anyway, but hopefully they can help. Indeed, I mentioned that I'd like to get the list of roaming providers more widely available to people, especially as my channel is very small, and the electrifying.com website is one place I hope it might sit. If they don't pick up on the story and produce and maintain a list of that type, then I'll approach Electric Vehicles UK in the hope that they will do it for us. I do feel someone should publish a list like this, and whilst I could set up a website of my own, it would likely sit rather forlorn in a small corner of the internet, unfound and unloved, so I want to try to encourage someone else to host it if I can. I named and shamed BP Pulse for not making roaming information available, but they are not alone. The other one that was no help at all was Pod, known as Podpoint prior to recent rebranding exercise. Having scoured their website for the information, I emailed the press team at Pod, but they didn't respond at all. Fortunately, I happened upon them in the ZapMap app, so that solved that one, but no thanks to them. Pod have not been a network I wanted to use without a roaming payment provider. They too have wanted people to sign up to their own app for the longest of times. An app which, I gather, isn't all that great to use. Pod use a prepayment mechanism to ensure they get paid, so you have to top up your account in £10 increments before you can charge, and any leftover credit is rather stranded in your account after you've finished charging, so you can only use it for other pod points. That's an approach that ties people to their network, and that's not something I'm at all comfortable with, especially for people who can't afford to have money stranded in a charging account for weeks at a time. Well, now there's finally a solution to that. ZapMap don't require prepayment like that and can now finally be used to start and stop charges at pod points. So I'm very happy that the legislation has made that network more easily available to us. That seems like quite a big win. There's one blank on the list you'll notice and that's Tesla. 
I don't know of a way to access those Tesla superchargers that are public using anything but their app. However, I wonder if they use DCS as well. In the States, Tesla superchargers can be accessed via manufacturers' own apps, and I wonder if that is done through DCS, and therefore would work in the UK and Europe too. But I don't know that, and so the entry remains blank for now. I should also highlight that some Tesla sites are definitely in breach of the regulations in that V2 and V3 superchargers cannot be accessed using contactless payments, something that is required if they are open to the public. Tesla generally don't seem to upgrade sites very often, they seem to focus instead on adding new sites as fast as they can. Therefore, while I originally expected those public V2 and V3 sites to be upgraded by this point, I now realise my error in that belief. Instead, I think they would close them if they were to get a notice of non-compliance, but only at that point. In the meantime, they are leaving them open for people to use if they want to, as taking away sites isn't something that would be very popular with those who have used them before. That's my assumption anyway, but I don't know that. When talking about Tesla, you should always be mindful that I own a few Tesla shares, so maybe I'm being too soft on them, but I'm prepared to give them the benefit of the doubt for the time being. I think these network-specific apps will remain available into the future, and you may get preferential charging rates through them. That's a way to buy your loyalty if they can, as well as getting all that juicy data about you. By all means use the network-specific apps if you want, it's entirely your choice. If you think the preferential rate is worth going for, then use it. Just remember that you no longer have to if you don't want to. In summary, the Public Charge Point Regulations 2023 have been in place for a while, but now all of the regulations are enforceable. Included in the text is detail of the fines that will be meted out for non-compliance. Hopefully enforcement of that type will not be needed and our experience of the public charging network will continue to get better and better. The rules bring fairer and more transparent pricing, something we should all appreciate, as well as contactless payments on any DC rapid charger if we so choose. The requirement to achieve a high level of reliability is of course long overdue, but here at last, and something I think we should welcome. The need for reporting, as well as the implementation of a standard API, allows for monitoring and greater interoperability. Furthermore, it simplifies the task of one network taking over another's assets, should any charge point operator go out of business. That should help to ensure consistent access to all of those charge points we have in place now. Requiring that a helpline be provided from which we can get assistance in the event of an issue is also important, should things go wrong. But it is the requirement for all charge points to offer payment, using one of a few roaming payment providers that I welcome the most. That should open up all of the networks to pretty much everyone and make things easier by far. So that's my thoughts, but what about yours? Is this something you already knew about? Or does today's video bring a welcome surprise? Let me know in the comments below. I'll be very interested to hear your thoughts on the legislation, so be sure to let me have those in the appropriate section, along with any questions you might have. What's more, if you know of any other roaming providers and what networks they can be used on, put those in too, and I'll pass that information on to whoever eventually publishes the definitive table. If you've liked this week's video, then it will be a huge help to me if you click the thumbs up button. And I would love to have you as a subscriber of the channel if you want to see more from me. Thanks.